Hello, good day everybody. My name is Trudy Nielsen and I'm the Aboriginal Resource Teacher for School District 73. And today we are going to be doing a George Littlechild art project. And I've invited a friend of mine who I'll let introduce herself. Hi, I'm Jewel. So she's a student in the, in the district and she is going to be doing um, the piece with us today. Uh, so welcome everybody. So George Littlechild is a Canadian Plains Cree artist and I really like his work because it's brightly colored and it's very bold and fun and playful and when you're doing his style of artwork you don't have to stress out about the images in the piece looking perfect because some people get really um, stressed when they feel like they have to draw something and his images that he incorporates into his collages, his mixed media collages, are not intimidating images. So he uses a lot of um, images uh, from his background and his culture, his Plains Cree culture. And today we are doing uh, horses. So he, uh, he has a lot of horses in many of his paintings. And he's actually written a couple of, or illustrated a couple of um, children's books, and this is one of them. What's the most beautiful thing you know about horses? And this land is my land is another one. And um, the man called Raven is another one. But we're really looking at this book today for our inspiration. So I did an appropriation and it's okay to do an appropriation and to copy another artist as long as you're acknowledging the fact that you are copying that piece. So I copied a piece of his, um, which is the cover of the book, What's the Most Beautiful Thing You Know About Horses? But we're not gonna copy his work today. We're going to just try to do his style by using horses in our images. And um, so I'll just kind of show you some other images that he has with horses. So that is what I mean when I say it's playful colors, bold, it's not intimidating to draw, all, it's not perfectly symmetrical, even the stars are not perfect. So that's the great thing about, and this is another one that I love, so he's got lots of horses. And then again, collage, paint, pastel, pencil, crayon, all different kinds of mediums. I really like the pastel because it is so bright and bold and it's not as messy as paint. Those are my bulldogs, so they make a lot of noise, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, here's a self-portrait that he did, George Littlechild on his horse. And I don't have time to read the whole book to you, but just really fun colors and um, and there's horses in all of the pictures in this book. So we're going to start by showing you how to do the profile of the uh, horse. So the large horse head, which I've got up here, and I adapted this to actually do it with grade one. So I just traced out um, the stencil on a doubled up poster board and I traced it out for them, and then they cut it out, they had two heads, and then they created a piece like that. But we are in intermediate and high school, so we can draw our own. And again, they don't have to be perfect. So we're going to start by doing the big profile of the horse, and then we will do um, some little horses that we're going to cut out both of them. So let's get to it. And I am intimidated, and I was telling Joel, I'm intimidated by drawing. Drawing is not my forte, but it doesn't have to be perfect, as long as it's got the general shape. So if this was the stencil that I was using, I'd make sure it goes all the way to the bottom, and there I've got the general idea. But I'm going to just go up here, and I think Jewel was going to do hers a little bit different, because I think you wanted to possibly add a mane. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she's got hers... Um, horizontal and I've got mine vertical and mine's doubled because I'm going to do two horse heads that are exactly the same. Okay so I'm going to start out here and I'm going to go up, give it an ear, an ear, 
And then I'm going to come down for his big snout pretty much all the way to the other side. And then down and down and then up. I'm going to come right in here and then all the way down. And that's just for the profile. You can find um, also stencils online. So you can't see that. So I'll do it again in Sharpie because I'm okay with the shape. So I'm going up to the ears, down, bring the smoke out, and then up, and then there. That's good enough. And just that easy. So you got yours? Oh, perfect. Okay, so if you want to do yours in um, Sharpie so they can see. And then while she's doing that, I will just give you the close up. And as I said, I doubled it up because if I do want to do one with just two horse head profiles, I um, I've got them both the same and they will be symmetrical, but again, maybe you want to do two separate profiles. Like it's totally up to you how you want to, uh, incorporate the horses into your piece. So I, I hope that everybody's is going to be unique and individual and not cookie cutters. It's a little bit, uh, yeah. The, the grade one class that I taught, they weren't even cookie cutter because everybody colored their horses uniquely and beautifully and differently. Just um, so they did turn out unique, but because we are more capable than six year olds at this level, we can, uh, good. Nice. Oh, that's a nice size too, because she she had an idea of incorporating both the little horses and not bad. I don't feel like crying. I might, <laughs> honestly, I've actually had crying fits trying to draw things before, but anyway, so I've got my two heads and maybe you want to put them on your paper like that. Maybe you want to have them facing each other. So we will color those and collage them onto our background later. We want to do the little horses now. So we want to do these little guys. And again, they don't have to look exactly like mine. However you want to draw your horse is however you want to draw your horse. So I'm going to take, again, I'm doing the double. But if you're just doing one piece uh, like this size, then you, you would only want to do um, your horses only that would fit into one piece because you, you don't need, yeah, because it's going to fit onto a half a poster board. Okay, so, and oh yeah, when I'm doing double, I do my horse head on the side that opens, but now for this one, so you're good with that, we can take that down. Okay, get some tape. And then for the second one, um, you might want to do, do you want to fold it so that you have the same horse? Yeah. Okay, so you can fold that one in half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fold that one. And then my tape is all dried out. And my nails are not cooperating. Use a different Actually, we can probably use this one. So how many horses were you thinking for your smaller ones? So maybe four. So you would want to do, so you would get four if you did one here and one here. Yeah. So I'm going to do my horses like this. It's a simple like sideways oval. Oh, this is going to be a chubby horse. And then the neck, and then another oval, the ears, the mane, 
the, and I always say, her hooves, the W, long W's, and the legs are a little tubby, but I can also fix that when I'm cutting, and then the tail. I don't think. That's it. Oh, I just have, yeah, I just have, and I'll have space down here for another little one if I really want to do little ones. Might as well do a little one. And that's what I mean. This isn't an intimidating drawing of a horse. And I remember drawing horses when I was little and just getting so frustrated because they're actually pretty hard to draw really realistically. But these ones don't have to be realistic, which is fun. Um, and then, oh, I should show you with the Sharpie. I'm going to thin this guy out a little bit because he was a little on the tubby side. And then the W hoof feet. And, oh, no, it's a little bit. And again, if you make some mistakes, you can always fix it when you're cutting it. Everything is fixable. And sometimes mistakes make the most beautiful parts of your piece. So just go with it. And that's what I love about George Littlechild. It's just, it's no pressure for things to just be super perfect. In fact, they're far from like perfect looking and that's what makes his work so beautiful. It's just fun. So I've got my doubled up horses. So this is gonna be, I've got another little one at the bottom. I'm gonna cut that out while she's finishing her um, where's that one? Pardon? Where's that outline on? Is it outline? Well, there's the outline sharpie. Oh, yeah, outline it. Sure, unless you, yeah, outline it just so they can see. So then I'm going to quickly cut this out. And again, the poster, um, the poster board works really well for this. It, it, more so than, I, I mean, you could do it with construction paper, but cardstock is is nice to work with because when we get into the coloring part of it, um, it's just more sturdy and just easier to work with. So yeah, I'm just cutting out my horses. And then it's going to be coloring the horses. So if you look at his work, really every, he does choose colors that go well together, but often the colors are just even a little bit clashy. So even that is okay because it just looks, it's just, it looks good. So I encourage you to even go online and do a little bit of research about his work and uh, just his style of incorporating the different mediums and okay you need scissors yeah oh okay you can use these ones okay. so i'll just be sick and if you use sharpie to draw your horses you can color on the other side or not again like it doesn't feel like there's a lot of rules to his work, which is, again, it doesn't feel like it's stressful. Okay, so my horses are almost done, and then I'm going to get to coloring them. So, like I said, I really like using the pastel because it's so bold and they're fun to work with because they just kind of slide across the page and because he layers a lot of colors. So he'll put a base and then he'll add more layers and layers of colors. So, um, and then he'll use tools that, I mean, he does that with paint as well. Scratches, designs, uh, different types of lines, different kinds, a lot of symbol work in his pieces, like stars and circles and arrows and teepees and all kinds of things from his background. And so when you layer pastels, you can 
either create new colors or you can scratch out designs so that you can see the colors underneath. And that's the easiest to do with pastels and it's the last, least messy. So I would suggest coloring the horses with uh, pastel. Not bad. And then with these and these, you don't even have to keep these exactly like this. Maybe you want to transform them a little bit. Um, maybe you want to cut parts of them off. Um, but I would suggest, see, look at even just that. That looks cool. And that one image had, I think, four horses like this. So you could layer them on top of each other when you start to collage them onto your background, or you could make them even like this and have any way you want to um, compose them on your background is totally up to you and it's going to be wonderful any way you do it. Um, so she was doing the small horses because she has an idea, um, but you'll see when she gets to it. Okay, so materials. I'll just quickly go over some things that we have here. So pastels, uh, all different colors, lots of colors. And uh, pencil crayons, that can be, you can even use the pencil crayons to scratch designs in uh, to your horses while you're having the layers of pastels. Even crayons, you can put on top or underneath or anywhere. Just play and have fun. Felts. Um, and then I have watercolors and acrylics. So like lots of different um, mediums. Oh, and also, like I said, he does a lot of collage. So he adds, even I've seen his work that has like jingles from Jingle Dress incorporated onto it. Um, but he does love his gold. So. I got some gold um, metallic paper for collaging um, circles and shapes and stars onto the background at the end. And yeah. So, you want to show them your horse? <laughs> okay, so we are going to get to the coloring and we might skip forward a little bit after um, this part. But. Um, we're going to take our stuff over to the table and get get to work. So I just wanted to show you how I'm going to start coloring my horses. So you can see that he just kind of breaks up sections of color and um, just adds lots of different colors. So I'm going to take my first one and I'm going to uh, choose. I like purple for this one. So I'm just going to section off there, section off, it doesn't really matter there, maybe section off the tail, section off the head, and I'm going to color them all different colors. Maybe I'll even section off the legs a different color. And then I'm going to get to coloring and I'm going to layer pastel um, on all of my horses. So these are <laughs> so far what we've got each. So I chose like cool colors for my first horse. And then also cool and warm colors for my second horse. I always choose um, cool colors because that's like what my picture is going to be based on. Yeah. So we have, uh, she just has to do her one profile. And this is mine. So I use nice warm colors and I'm starting to get some ideas of how I want it um, composed on my page. This one reminds me of uh, the sun and like a mother so and these ones are going to be um, incorporated too so I have the three three
three courses and then duo. I did um, two more from my other two. I did like one that's like kind of blended, and then this other one, which is kind of just really random, but it works. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so next step, she's going to finish her profile course, and I am going to choose a background. So, I have done black with all my other ones that I have tried doing, so I think I'm going to try a different color, and um, it's just half a poster board, and then start collaging and doing the background symbols and background shapes and background um, sections. Uh, I'm going to glue my horses on first and then add the, um, the background. So we will carry on. And I'm kind of running out of my liquid glue, which isn't very good. Back on. Oh, I can add that back on. I might do that after. We'll see. Okay. I have my other small horses. So how do I want them? I kind of want them. Overlapping? Maybe? I'm not loving what I did by cutting off the neck. <laughs> I, can, I can always fix it with the collage part or the drawing um, and adding of uh, shapes and colors. And it can all be fixed. Sometimes it's a beautiful mistake. I want to do one that's just this size horses and no big head, big profile. And I'm going to add my neck back on there because I feel like it just gives it, yeah, it needs to be on there. And then add that on. And now I can start adding my background. So I can collage more things on there. I can pastel more things on there. I feel like I need to outline this horse a little bit because it's blending in too much to the yellow in the background. And I'm just going to add details. So when I talk about details in his George, little child style, um, well, we can just take a look. He often um, has, um, what's it called, blocks of uh, uh, sectioned off with different things like hearts, stars, moons. Here he's even collaged on some beadwork. Um, lots of gold and lots of bold colors. Lots of stars always. <laughs> But for like the edges and that, even along here, the um, the colors along just sections of the corner. This one has uh, patterns all the way around with paint, and those the jingle dresses. 
Anyways, lots of symbols. Okay, so I'm going to get doing that. And Jo looks like she's getting ready to assemble. Oh, she's made some... What do you want to show? Some like small teepees down in the background. Yeah. So because he's Plains Cree, they had teepees in that area, so they're often in his work. But of course, where we come from, we didn't have teepees in this area. We had temporary, temporary homes, which were conical shaped structures that were the same um, shape but much smaller and easier to pack around um, the territory, lightweight with like tule reed mats and. Yeah, um, so you're going to start composing yours, mm -hmm. and she has an idea of what she's adding in the background, so I guess we'll just get to it, and then if we fast forward, um, we'll see in a bit. Yes, a hundred percent. Okay, so I've added lots of designs and lots of patterns and I've done the border and lots of colors and I'm going to start collaging some of this gold on. Jewel, can you explain what you have? Um, it's like four horses, like staring at the moonlight, and then there's like what would they be called? The the what? Um, like the teepees. Yeah. Just yeah. like and then there's like just teepees in the background, mm -hmm. and then I'm just gonna be adding like a moon into lots of things. Okay. Do I do a half moon or a full moon? Mm, where are you going to put it? I think probably on this side. I think, I don't know, he does have a lot of crescent moons in his work, but a full moon would look good there. What do you think? We have very different pieces, but they're both really in the style of George Mitchell. We ended up not using paint or not using any other mediums, um, but that's okay because they're still bold and they're still bright. And um, I chose to put lots of different symbols and shapes. She chose to stay with the plain style, like nighttime sky and the northern lights, but she did have some gold stars and the teepees, which he, he often has, and she added the crescent moon, which he has a lot of the crescent moon in his pieces. And I just added, and I could keep going and going and going and adding and adding and adding um, until the whole thing is just all my 
yellow background is covered in symbols and colors and blocks of color and patterns and lines, all different kinds of lines and shapes. I could keep going if I want, but I'm going to stop there and I'll take my knife to show you up close. It's my final product. I'm going to take yours off so it doesn't Oh, oh, that's a start. We'll get it back on there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. And there's endless possibilities of how this looks at the end. And that's the fun thing about it. There's absolutely no wrong way, I put some glue on that, to do this project, um, especially if it's just uh, the most beautiful thing you know about horses. You could even write a little bit of... Um, text on your piece uh, to talk about what's the most beautiful thing about horses or even just anything because often he does have text incorporated into his pieces. So we thank you for joining us today and we hope that you